Hi everyone, my name is Christopher, and I'm currently an animator on Teamfight Tactics. Today, I wanted to share with you a small peek into some of the work involved in animating the dragon in our Sanctuary of the Ancient Arena from Set 7 Dragonlands. We start by referring to our concept, which has gone through multiple feedback iterations with artists aligning on a visual direction, projected scope, and technical requirements. For this particular arena, we wanted to make the ancient dragon feel integrated with the environment, so it was really important to be able to see how its body wraps around as many nooks and crannies as possible. Once we had an early proxy model, we began to develop a spline rig. Since we knew that the dragon was going to move around the sanctuary, we needed to test out how efficiently we could move the dragon along a specific path. But before we could animate the dragon moving, we first needed to check whether we could even fit the dragon on the map. This required many revisions as we had to add more verts, bones, and controls to achieve the kinds of bends and proportions we wanted. You definitely never get it right the first time. The final dragon ended up being about 22,000 tries and 200 joints, with an additional 400 joints and 300 controls for animating. While we were developing the rig for our super long dragon, the environment artists were concurrently hard at work creating bits and pieces of the sanctuary to put together. You can see that not all the faces of the environment are present, but that's because we don't have to worry about the sides that the camera angle will not see. And with everything in place, all that's left is the dragon. Now, since we wanted the dragon to slowly wake up throughout the game's duration, we came up with a sequence of stages for the dragon to progress through, and a list of animations for each state. The concept only illustrated the dragon in its sleeping form, so we needed to explore some additional options for how the dragon would sit or fly in its different locations on the map. This involved drawing lots and lots of colorful squiggly arrows. And finally, with everything planned out, all we had to do now was hit the animate button. Okay, that looks kind of ugly. So maybe we should change some of the curves, edit the slope, and push the spacing a bit. Hmm. Better? The animation process for the dragon was quite interesting, as most of the body motion was driven through the spline curve. If I ever wanted the dragon to turn its head or shift its body, I would additively layer more animation on top of its idling cycle through the forward kinematic controls along the head and body. This was a new way of working for me, as I have never dealt with such a large character before, so working with a simple workflow that could be added onto saved me a lot of headache. Especially for the transition animations between states, I cannot imagine having to individually animate each of those bones as the dragon flies all over 3D space. Would have been a nightmare. In the end, while I didn't really cover every aspect, I think what I wanted to illustrate with this video was all the different types of work involved in creating something like this. There are numerous artists with all different types of backgrounds and skills pitching in all over, and the final result is greater than anything one person could do on their own. The splashes in the water, the rustling of the leaves, and the emotional music all contribute to creating a unique experience and environment. For us to mold in as we roll down from 70 gold and miss all the units we want. Anyway, I'm going to end this video with a small showcase of some of the dragon animations. I hope you enjoyed this brief look at how the Sanctuary of the Ancient Four came to life. May all of your roles be blessed, and until next time, bye!